we have all these beautiful seedlings that we've been preparing as a part of our spring garden. And they're inside developing now so that we're ahead of the game when it's time to plant outdoors. But starting seedlings can be frustrating because there are quite a few issues that you might run into. And today we're gonna to talk about five that you can avoid that are gonna help you be more productive when it comes time to plant outdoors. Guten yardening, everybody. Strong, healthy seedlings can be a cornerstone to any successful garden. But there are some issues that can come up as you're trying to prepare your seedlings to go outdoors so that you can have a head start on your garden. Realistically, if you start seedlings ahead of time, what you end up doing is cutting off time during the actual development process of your plant once it is outdoors. And that means that you can take a greater advantage of your entire growing season. So we think it's important to start as many seeds as we can indoors now as we prepare to head outdoors here for our spring garden in Zone 5, Wisconsin. But that being said, there are quite a few issues that can arise and we want to address five of them today to help you with some advice on how to prevent the issues and also, in some cases, how to fix them. One of the most frustrating things that you can experience as a gardener, in my opinion, is whenever you plant a bunch of seeds either indoors to prepare for outdoors or direct sowing them outdoors and you don't get the germination you expect. In fact, I've had that happen before where I've planted an entire area for us and nothing has developed. Well, there are several reasons why this might be happening to you, but I'm going to suggest that the first thing you do anytime you're seeing an issue with germination is to run a quick germination test. As something as simple as a little baggie with a few seeds inside of paper towel inside will tell you the type or the rate at which you're going to get some germination for the seeds that you have. Because it is possible that you've held on to your seeds too long and they're no longer going to have a high germination rate. It's also possible that there are other things that you're doing wrong and you can rule out the germination rate as a problem. This is a very simple example, one that we would typically do at a larger scale, but this was done for one of our other seed videos. In this video, we talked about putting three seeds in here. These are our organic 42-day tomatoes. We put three seeds in, this little paper towel with a little bit of water, sealed it up, and two out of the three seeds germinated. And you can see very clearly what that looks like here. Now, if we were actually doing this as a test for our seeds in general, we would probably do at least 10 of these, but this was just a limited test. But this test shows us that we should be getting germination. And so if we have our seedlings started in one of these trays and we're not seeing germination, then we know the issue lies somewhere else. And that issue could be with the seed starting mix that we created. We need to make sure it's not too compact. And you know on the back side of most of the packages where you buy your seeds, they tell you the depth at which the seeds should be germinated. And I want to make sure you understand that that's not just a suggested depth. That depth is there for a reason. If you plant your seeds too deep for the seed size or the seed variety that you're trying to grow, you'll find that perhaps it doesn't have enough oxygen or it doesn't have enough energy to break through the soil and to start growing. And so it's really important to keep in mind that when a seed says it can be planted at one inch, that you can plant it at one inch. And if it says to sow on the surface or an eighth of an inch down, that that's what you're doing in order to prevent any other problems. You don't wanna end up with a weak plant simply because you planted it a half inch too deep. Now, the other thing to remember about seedlings is that until they do germinate, typically the lighting is not as important as is the warmth. Some of our recent videos have focused on the seeds that should be started in any given month here in Zone 5. And one of the things that we have stressed in every one of those videos is the optimal germination temperature. And the reason we've stressed that is because each seed requires a different temperature. Some, like these tomatoes, prefer a warmer 80 to 85 degree Fahrenheit temperature during germination. Some seeds like the spinach doesn't require nearly that warm of a temperature. 
And so warmth is actually far more important when you're talking about seed starting and germination than light until they start to develop and break through the surface. So if you're having a problem getting the seeds to germinate in the first place, please keep in mind that depth, the temperature, the level of moisture, and making sure you have a good potting mix are the first and foremost steps to look at. Now the second issue, and maybe one of the most prevalent issues out there when it comes to seed starting, is having leggy seedlings. We did a YouTube Shorts video a couple of months ago where we focused on leggy seedlings. We planted some speckled peas and we allowed them to grow and the only light we gave them was a small circle light, much like you'd use to record, well, YouTube videos. And in the video, you could see them literally searching out, circling, searching for more light. And that lack of light is actually one of the main reasons why you end up with leggy seedlings. Now, leggy seedlings are not healthy as a general rule. When they grow bigger, they might not even be able to support themselves. They might fall over. And so this is one of the reasons why you need to look into lighting after they've already germinated. After the vegetables have germinated, then lighting becomes far more important. I'm confident you've even seen plants follow the sun across the sky, ending up at a different point than where they started at the beginning of the day. And then you've had to probably rotate that plant to get it to go back the other way. Well, if you want to prevent those leggy seedlings from occurring, it's very important that you, again, provide enough light. So I'm gonna show you the setup that we created for some of our seedlings, and it's really simple and actually fairly inexpensive. These are 4,000K lights. Now, typically we try to grow with 5,000K lights, but you can see these seedlings are doing just fine with these little tiny lights, these little strip of lights, and each of these lights were about $7. So we invested in these lights while they were on sale. We found a way to hang them on this frame, and now we've got them lowered down to within a few inches of each of these seedling trays and the seedling trays are doing great. I mean, you can see from these tomatoes that we have right here, these are firm tomatoes. They're strong, they're not seeking out extra light. They've got everything they need. And so one of the things we recommend is you use those LED lights. If you have them, they work perfectly. Get them down as close as you can to the plant and then pull them up as the plant starts to grow. But since they don't put off a ton of heat, there's no problem with getting them right down to the plant as you're going. Now, one of the most common recommendations for leggy seedlings that we've seen is to throw them out and start over. And that might not be your best bet. In fact, one of the things that's suggested to fix leggy seedlings is to bring a fan in and allow that fan to blow on low right beside the seedlings so it's pushing and waving them back and forth, which should help to strengthen the plant as long as you don't go overboard. Another suggestion for helping your leggy seedlings strengthen up a little bit is to gently run your hand over the top of them every once in a while, and that will also encourage it to strengthen itself. Now, the third issue is one that is confusing to a lot of people, and that is the issue of overwatering. And one of the reasons why that's confusing to a lot of people is because once we overwater, the plants will often start to tip over and look like they need more water when in reality we've just provided too much. So one thing that's important to remember is that these are seedlings, meaning that their root system hasn't really developed very much. I mean, you can see if we come back in here and look at this tomato that we started in our germination test, there's just a little tap root here and a little bit of fibrous rooting it's not going to require very much water just in general. So as long as you're keeping the soil a little bit damp, a little bit moist, you're not gonna have a problem. If you're flooding it with water, then you're going to have this issue where they start to tip over, look wilty, and you might confuse that with being dried out or a problem, but it's not. You want that well-draining soil. And one of the things we recommend to do, and one thing that we certainly do, is if you have these in a tray underneath, you can water into the tray, pour the water into the tray, allow these to sit down, and you know on the base of these, they have those little holes. Well, 
the water can soak up from the bottom instead of being poured down from the top and that will enable it to pull up as much water as it needs and you can tip off the rest. And remember, whenever you add too much water, you're pushing out the oxygen that the roots need to survive as well. Now, if you do water from underneath, that will also help to prevent the next issue. Now, the next issue is called damping off, and it looks really similar in many ways to the problems that happen when you overwater. And in fact, damping off is caused by a fungus that loves to live in a soil or an area that's cool and has a lot of moisture. And so if you overwater, that might actually lead to some damping off. And we have an example here of a couple of our seedlings that did experience this damping off. And you can see down at the base of them, it looks almost like it's shriveled right up above where the root would be. It's shriveled and they're falling over and dying. Now, a couple of ways to prevent this from happening. One way is to not overwater, as we said. If you keep that surface area dry, that will be helpful. If you bring in a fan and can blow it across the area, that's also incredibly helpful because air circulation helps to prevent a lot of diseases. Air circulation is important whether you're growing indoors or outdoors and regardless of the size of the plant. That air, that fresh air flowing around is going to help prevent a lot of the issues you might be experiencing. And one of the things that we highly recommend and that we do ourselves in order to try to prevent this problem is we don't just reuse containers that we've had outdoors or even ones that we've had indoors year over year without sanitizing first. So typically we use a water bleach mixture that we can go ahead and clean everything out and sanitize it so that when we come back down here, it's as sterile as we can make it, especially if we're reusing it. And especially if we've had problems with damping off in the past, this will help to prevent them in the future. And the fifth problem that we're going to talk about is the problem of fungus gnats. If you've ever experienced fungus gnats, you probably know what we're talking about. And one of the challenges of starting indoors is if you do get fungus gnats, there aren't any natural predators in here. And so you're going to be dealing with them in the long run if you don't handle your seedlings well. And one of the things that we do to try to prevent fungus gnats is to avoid having overly damp soil exposed everywhere. Fungus gnats are more of a nuisance than anything else most of the time, but en masse, they can stunt the growth of your seedlings. And that is not something that you want as you move forward. So try your best to, again, keep circulation happening. It's amazing how much a fan can make a difference when you're starting your seedlings. So keep your circulation going. Try to water underneath, or at the very least, don't overwater so that there's not a ton of damp soil that they love to live in. If you face any of these five issues head on, you should be able to prevent them from overwhelming your seedlings. And the end result should be that you have a bunch of healthy seedlings to take outside and plant for your next outdoor garden. We hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you found it helpful, leave us a comment. Don't forget to like the video. Remember to share and subscribe. And most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.